So in the next 10 years, there's predicted to be more than 50,000 launches of small satellites worldwide. Um, all of these satellites will be in constellations, some as small as 10 satellites, others as big as 1,000. Did you know you can soon fly from Sydney to New York within three hours? Who's making this happen? Hear from a world leader in scramjet technology and a former research scientist at NASA's Langley Center of Research on this episode of Tomorrow's Tech. I'm Jayzo, joined today by Michael Smart, founder, CTO, and head of research at Hypersonics, a leading innovator in the aerospace sector. With a reusable launch vehicle that can make multiple flights, Hypersonics is taking a sustainable approach and working with leading enterprises like Boeing and BOC to prepare for launch. Welcome, Michael. Thanks very much, Jay. Great to be here. Let's look at Hypersonics launch vehicle. Hypersonics is pioneering the future of the industry through affordable, sustainable spaceflight technology. We fly to space using the Earth's atmosphere to soar like a bird. Here's how it works. Our Delta Velos vehicle flies like an aeroplane. Able to place a satellite in orbit from any launch site, it offers quicker turnarounds and more launch windows. The Delta Velos can accelerate from Mark 5 to Mark 12. With no moving parts, it's also inexpensive to build. The satellite launch process, like any space launch, is split into three stages. Stage one sees the boomerang boost the Delta Velos to Mark V. True to its name, it then returns to where it came from. Delta Velos is stage two, flying to the upper reaches of the atmosphere under scramjet power. When the Delta Velos reaches terminal velocity, it launches stage three delivering the satellite to orbit. Like the boomerang before it, the Delta Velos returns and lands on Earth, ready to fly its next payload again. Let's lead the way to the future and fly to space together. Now, Michael, tell us, what inspired the introduction of hypersonics launch system? And why have renowned aerospace organizations like NASA not achieved this already? So um, small satellite launch systems are one single use and are highly polluting. And it's a real deficiency of the current industry. And that leads to uh, high costs and also it's just not sustainable. Our Delta Velos Orbiter uh, flies to space like, a, like an aircraft. Um, and it's fully reusable, can be used many times over. Um, also, our Spartan scramjet engines are use hydrogen as fuel, so don't create any CO2. Um, and just for your viewers' uh, benefit, um, a scramjet is a hypersonic air breathing engine, uh, and it's about five times more efficient than a rocket. Now, there are three key technologies that are developed in the last decade that enable our system. The first is like the massive increase in computing power. Secondly, um, High temperature composites can now be made in aerodynamic shapes and be fully reusable, many, used many times over. And the third is the advances in um, hydrogen economy have meant that um, there, are many, there are many technologies such as tanks and other things that we can just buy off the shelf. Um, and why Australia? Well, the University of Queensland has the best facility for testing scramjet en engines anywhere in the world. And also the Australian government has really supported um, hypersonic research over the last 30 years. I agree. I think it's time the aerospace industry leans towards a green approach. How do we attract greater investment into the Australian aerospace industry? And how do we enable a thriving startup and innovation ecosystem? Well, Jay, the best way to attract investment is through customers. So in the next 10 years, there's predicted to be more than 50,000 launches of small satellites worldwide. Um, all of these satellites will be in constellations, some as small as 10 satellites, others as big as 1,000. Now, hypersonics technology can launch individual satellites um, very quickly, not within weeks, not months like the current technology. Um, and this quick replacement of satellites will stop blackouts in communications networks and also stop patchy um, Earth observation data. Now, as I said, the best way to attract investment is through customers. If the Australian government guaranteed 
um, contracts for satellite launch to Australian companies, um, then this would attract investment into the industry and help us to mature. And once mature, we can then offer services uh, to international companies. Certainly. I think there's great scope for Australia to lead in the aerospace industry on a global level. Let's look at advanced technologies. How is artificial intelligence involved in the functioning of the Delta Velos launch orbiter? Yeah, so um, our Delta Velos orbiter is fully autonomous and it travels at very, very high speed. Um, it, will, it will travel on a pre-programmed trajectory, but there are always incidents that happen in any flight. And so what AI will help us to do is to respond to those incidents and to have a safe flight. Fascinating. And what do you plan to achieve through your collaborations with Boeing and BOC? So Boeing are a leading um, aircraft and space vehicle manufacturer. And we're working with them to develop um, reusable space launch systems that are powered by our Spartan scramjet engines. And with BOC, they are a leading company in the new hydrogen um, economy. And so we're working with them to develop all our procedures and our processes for the safe and efficient use of hydrogen. That's great to know, Michael. Now the fun bit. <laughs> what music do you plan to play on your first launch? Well, I'm a great fan of the Smiths. And so on our first launch, we'll play the song, How Soon Is Now? Because we've been waiting a long time to, you know, to develop reusable space launch technology. So I think that's the perfect song. I like you taste your music, Michael, <laughs> and we're super excited about your journey to launch. And thank you for joining us on the show today. That's great, Jay. Great to be here. To our audience watching, if AI or space technology intrigue you, follow us weekly on Tomorrow's Tech's LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram channels for our Believe in AI series. Curious to know more? Let us know in the comments below what you feel will lead to hypersonics launch system success in the Australian aerospace industry. We look forward to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you on the next episode of Tomorrow's Tech. Tomorrow's Tech presented by 3.digital.